Hello everybody. My name's Simon. I work in the maths department at Brunel University London. I'm going to take a few minutes of your time to show you how we use computers to do mathematics. This is a bit different to what you're used to. At university, we use computers a lot because many of the maths problems that we want to solve are too complicated to solve by hand. At Brunel, we make a lot of use of a program or programming language and environment, software environment called MATLAB. And it's made by this company called MathWorks. Now this is quite an expensive product. At university, you don't worry about the expense because the university pays for it. But at the moment, you probably don't have access to this. So instead, we're going to use a free version of MATLAB, an open source version called Octave. So you can get at this, all you have to do is type octave-online.net into your web browser, and this pops up. And this allows you to do mathematics on a computer. So let's start simple. We can do things like this. We can say three times five plus two cubed. There we are, we just type in the bottom, hit return, and out comes the answer, 23. Three times five is 15, two cubed is eight, 15 and eight is 23. Okay, no big deal. Of course, we can all do that in our heads. We can do exponentials, e to the power minus three. We can do logarithms, log of 100. Hmm, that's the natural logarithm. You might have seen it written as ln, ln 100. In MATLAB and in Octave, we write log. We can do logs to the base 10, and we can ask, log base 10 of 100, hit return, and the answer is 2. Of course, because log to base 10 of 100 is the same as saying that 10 squared equals 100. We can do even more complicated things. We can do trigonometry. We can do sine of pi over 4 plus cos pi over 4. We can have variables. We can say that x is equal to pi over 4, and then we could type sine x plus tan x. Right. We can do more than that. We can set up a whole range of values of x. We can say let x go, go from 0 in steps of 0 0.1 to, let's say, 3. There we are. 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, all the way up to 3. Now, when we do this kind of thing, the screen can get a bit messy. So if we use a semicolon at the end and hit return, we don't see the list of numbers. Why is this useful? Well, one of the reasons it's useful, and there are many, is that we can plot graphs. Let's suppose we set up a list of numbers. X goes from 0 in steps of 0 0.1 to 4 pi. Again, we put the semicolon so we don't see the output. Well, now we can plot x against sine x. Great. We can add to this plot. If we type hold on, that means all new plots will go onto this plot. So we could plot several functions together. So we could also plot x against cos x. Now we've got two graphs. We can label our axes because this is something we should always do. Hmm. It's a bit small though, isn't it? You can't really see that label down there, the label for the x-axis. So let's use up arrow, get the previous command back, and let's ask it to be done in a bigger font size. Let's say 30. That's the size of the font that's used for the label. Now oh, that's better. Now we can see that nice clear X. We can do a Y label as well. We can say two big function. And again, we would like that to be in a nice, big, readable font. 
Ah, that's looking like a high quality graph now, isn't it? The other thing we'd like to do is to add a legend. A legend tells the person looking at the graph which line is which. So we plotted sine first. So we'll type sine into our legend first. And we've plotted cos second. And now we've got a legend. It tells us that the blue line is sine x and the red line is cos x. It's a little bit small. Well, unfortunately, to get a bigger font size here, it's a little bit more complicated. We do it like this. Use up arrow and put an L equals in front of that legend command. Semicolon. And now type set L, comma, quotes, font, size. And I'm going to choose, well, I think 10 will be good. Yeah, let's go for 10. It's a bit small, isn't it? Let's go for 15. Mm, now that's pretty good. So this is called Octave, and it's a nice environment for doing mathematics on a computer. And we've shown how to do some familiar things. Let's see now how we can do some more complicated things. For this, I've looked at the AQA website and looked at past papers and mark schemes. In particular, I focused on maths, AS and A level and the mathematics specification 7357. For the purpose of this introduction to Octave, I'm going to pick on the specimen papers here. I'm going to pick on question paper one and the mark scheme for question paper one. And I have those opened up in these two tabs. And we're gonna start with question seven. Not all of these exam questions are suitable for use for working on a computer. Some are. And the reason this might be useful to you is that when you're working at home, when you're going through homework, when you're trying to prepare for tests and for exams, it's useful to know if what you're doing is correct. And one way to check your answers is to go onto an online system like this, a computer system, and see if you can reproduce your working. See if you can get the same answer. So let's look at question seven. Find the values of k for which the equation 2k minus 3 times x squared minus kx plus k minus 1 equals 0 has equal roots. Well, what does this mean? A root is a value of x for which an equation is equal to zero. So we're looking for the solutions of this equation and our values of x. And we want to keep varying k until the two solutions to this equation are equal. Now, why do I say two? Because it's a quadratic equation. Here is a number times x squared, Here's another number times x, and here's a constant term. Now we know about quadratic equations, don't we? Here they are. ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero is solved with this famous quadratic formula. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So let's see how we can apply that in this case. Here's our a, so we would insert 2k minus 3 for a. Here's our b, minus k, so wherever there's a b, we would put minus k. And here's our c, k minus 1, so wherever there's a c, we would put k minus 1. And that would give us two values of x, 2 because there's a plus and a minus. So let's try and do that. But let's see if we can do it in MATLAB, or in this case, Octave. We do it like this. We say sims xk. This tells Octave that we want to use symbolic variables. So these are variables that don't have to have an actual value. These are values, variables that can take any value. And then we type in solve brackets 
And here's our equation, 2k minus 3 times x squared minus kx plus k minus 1 equals 0. Here it is, 2k minus 3 times x squared minus kx plus k minus 1 equals 0. There's a few things to notice. In MATLAB, in Octave, we use an asterisk for multiplication. We use this upward shaped wedge or a hat. Sometimes it's called a hat for exponentiation. So this is x squared. And because this is an equation that we want to solve, we use two equal signs to say that this must be the same thing as zero. And we're asking to solve this comma here. This comma means we're asking to solve this for x. So let's hit return and let's see what happens. Takes a while, but look, we have two answers. We have b over 2a, sorry, minus b over 2a, here and here. We have a plus and a minus. Here's the plus and here's a minus. And then we have a square root term in the numerator, that's this one, and the 2a in the denominator here and here. So we've got two answers. It's not terribly helpful though, is it, if we look back, because we're asked to find the values of k for which this equation has equal roots. So we want to know when are these two numbers, this one and this one, equal? Think about it for a minute. Press pause if you like. Well, they're only going to be equal if this term and this term are both equal to zero. And that really means that the numerator here and here are equal to zero. If we go back to this, we can see that the two values of x will be the same if the plus or minus here acts on zero. So if we're only adding or subtracting zero and then both values of x are equal to minus b over 2a. So another way in which we can solve this problem is we can simply ask for what values of k is b squared minus 4ac equal to zero? Well, b squared is minus k all squared. And then we would subtract off 4 times a times c. And we'd have to solve that for when it's equal to zero. So let's think about how we could do this. We can use the same command as before, the solve command, and we type this in. Here is b squared. Let's have a look. b squared is minus k all squared. There it is. Minus 4 times a times c. We want to solve that for values of k that make that expression equal to 0. And we get the answers 6 over 7 and 2. So let's go to the exam paper. Now we'll look at the solution. So here is the mark scheme for question seven. Here is the method. We want that b squared minus 4a equals zero. And here is the answer. k equals six over seven and k equals two, which agrees with what we computed. I hope you're starting to see the value of having a computer around. Now you don't have computers in exams, so there's no substitute for being able to do this kind of thing. But being able to check your work is really useful. And sometimes these things are too complicated to do by hand, and we have to use computers. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example. We'll go to question eight. Given that u equals two to the power x, write down an expression for du dx. Well, we could do that. Well, let's try and do something. That's a little bit more challenging. An integral, calculus. Find the exact value of the integral from zero to one of two to the power x multiplied by the square root of three plus two to the power x. 
fully justify your answer. That means you'd have to show all your working out. So let's say you've done all your working out and you're sitting there thinking, I wonder if I've made a mistake. So let's ask MATLAB to do this for us. In this case, it's Octave. I call it MATLAB because I'm used to using MATLAB. What do we do? Well, we ask for a symbolic variable x, and then we integrate this expression. So it's two to the power x times square root of three plus two to the power x, comma. That means integrate that expression with respect to x from zero to one. Hit return, and look what we got. Well, let's check that against the answer. So this is 8b. Let's look at the answer for 8b. Oh, gone past it. Here it is. 8b, this integral between these limits has come out to be this value. Hmm, it's not quite the same as this, is it? But it looks similar. There's a log two underneath and a three. There's a root five. Could be that we ought to simplify our expression. So let's see about simplifying. Now I could type it all in again and ask it to simplify, but actually if I just type ANS, that means take the previous answer and simplify it. Ah, that looks much better. Here we've got five root five minus eight in the numerator, five root five minus eight multiplied by two and a three log two in the denominator. An LOG here in octave is the same as LN the natural logarithm. So we're pretty happy with that. Now let's turn the heat up a bit. Let's do something a little bit more complicated still. This is question nine. A curve has this equation, y equals two x plus three divided by four x squared plus seven. Find dy by dx. Well, we go to MATLAB or Octave, we type sims x, and y of x. This tells Octave that we'd like to use a symbolic variable x, and we'd like a function called y of that symbolic variable. y is the function 2 times x plus 3 divided by four times x squared plus seven. And let's just check that we've done that correctly. It looks good. Now we're asked to find dy by dx. So again, suppose you've done your work and you would like to check it. Let's check it with Octave. We'll say that dy dx equals diff y, diff for differentiation. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the answer. So here, question nine, dy by dx is this expression here. Not quite the same as what we have here, is it? I wonder then if our friend Simplify can help us. Sorry, that's my mistake. I want to simplify dy by dx. ANS referred to the previous answer. Simplify dy by dx. Now, let's have a look at this. Here we have, well, the denominator is the same. Is the numerator the same? 
we've got a 4x squared, a plus 7. And if we take a common factor of 2 outside, we have a 4x times 2x plus 3 with a minus in front of it. Yes, it is. Brilliant. So we've successfully differentiated that. We want to show that y is increasing now when this expression holds. What does that mean? Well, dy by dx is the gradient of a function. So a function is increasing when its gradient is positive. So what you would do is take the expression for the gradient and work out when it is positive. And you should come to this expression. I want to move on to the next part. Find the values of x for which y is increasing. So this is like an equation, but subtly different. We would like to solve not an equation, but an inequality. We would like to solve that equation, but it's an inequality. So we'd like to solve that inequality. We want to find the values of x for which dy by dx is greater than zero, because that tells us that y is increasing. So let's ask Octave to do that for us. We have an answer. Minus seven over two is less than x. A uh, funny little symbol here. And then it says x is less than a half. Well, that funny little symbol, that upward pointing wedge, in this context means and. So the solution to this inequality is that minus seven over two is less than x. And at the same time, x is less than one half. Let's have a look at the answer. Minus seven over two is less than x and x is less than one half. So we've managed to solve that problem as well using our computer system. What do you think? So what do you think, really? I think these kind of things are really useful to have around. A lot of the maths we get asked to do is tough. Sometimes we can't do it in our own heads and we need computers. When you go to university and study maths, maybe even engineering, you'll almost certainly be introduced to a system like this. I've showed you Octave, which is a free version of MATLAB. It doesn't do everything that MATLAB does, but it does quite a lot. You might see a different system when you go to university, but they're all basically the same. So it's worth getting used to one. So that's about it for me. I don't have very much more to say, but I am gonna leave you with some homework. It's worth bearing in mind that you can always make up your own homework. Just go back to these past papers and try things out. See how you get on. I'm gonna show you one in particular and leave it for you. This is question 10C on the paper that we've been looking at. I'm not gonna say any more about it, except that I will give you some hints. These are the commands that you can type into Octave. See how you get on with them. I'm not gonna to explain to you how they work or what they do. You can use Google for that or your favorite search engine. You may not always find what you're looking for if you search for Octave. So search for MATLAB instead. They're very similar. The one thing I will say is that this dot here it's very important. X is a list of numbers, and this dot allows us to raise a number here, three, to that list, to the power of that list. It returns a list where each item in the list is three raised to the corresponding item in the list for X. Again, I'll leave you to experiment. If you go through this, you should get an answer like this, minus log five over log three. And in octave, log means log to base e, the natural logarithm. Let's look at the answer. The answer given hmm, has a log to base three. So here is my last hint for you. This is how you convert logs to base A to logs 
to base B. So that's it from me. I wish you good luck. Thank you for listening to me.